we see this woman she sees this prophet who passed her by who came for a meal and now she decides to host him in her house and she sets up four pieces of furniture and these four pieces of furniture was to accommodate the man of God who was coming by and today I just wanted to prophetically look and digest just simple simple instruction of how these four pieces of furniture actually relate to four facets of your relationship with the Holy Spirit in your life the first piece is the bed the bed speaks of intimacy and secondly the best the bed speaks of rest everybody who has a bed at home if you're single this is a place of rest if you're married it's a place of rest and intimacy and all the single people said I have no I have no idea what you're talking about but for us who are single people a bed is a place of rest for people who are married who have a covenant with somebody a bed is not just a place of rest it's also a place of intimacy we have to understand as Christians number one that the Holy Spirit comes to live in us through salvation he gets us through salvation but we get the Holy Spirit through surrender the Holy Spirit, I get the Holy Spirit when I get saved, but the Holy Spirit gets me when I surrender. That's why all Christians have the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit doesn't have all Christians because not all Christians surrender to the Holy Spirit they have. Are you with me? All Christians have a relationship, but not all Christians have intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Intimacy and relationship are two different things. For example, I am married to my wife. I have a relationship with my wife. It's a legal relationship. It's a covenant relationship. We are in the same house. We work in the same place. We sleep in the same bed. But it does not mean we are close all the time. In fact, just five days ago, on our second day of conference, actually on the third day of conference, my wife sat on the bed of our house and she looked at me and she said, we are so far from each other when I sat on the other side of the bed and every man understands what that means she's not talking about the distance from here to here and she's not talking about the facts that that our marriage is going through things she's just saying this that though we have a relationship we actually are not having intimacy right now many Christians have a legal relationship with the Holy Spirit they are sealed by the Holy Spirit they speak in tongues they are led by the Holy Spirit but the closeness to the Holy Spirit is not the same thing as having the Holy Spirit living in you for those of you who live with your parents you know how it is how you can be in the same house with your parents but be million miles apart because intimacy and relationship are not the same thing. You can have relationship and not have intimacy. But in order to have intimacy, we first start with the relationship. And somebody say amen. And so the intimacy with the Holy Spirit begins when we get the relationship and when we begin to surrender to the person of the Holy Spirit. Secondly is when I have intimacy, when you have closeness to the Holy Spirit, there will always be rest that will follow that. Rest is a result. Somebody say rest. No, not rest after you've eaten. Not that kind of rest. Not rest because you took antidepressants. 13% of people in America today are living on the pills to help them find freedom from anxiety. When I believe in reality, the secret to overcoming anxiety, the secret to overcoming depression, the secret to overcoming pressure and heaviness is not antidepressant pills it's finding intimacy with the Holy Spirit because in intimacy with the Holy Spirit there is rest and when you find rest you find greater intimacy with the Holy Spirit can somebody say amen, amen. say when I find rest I find intimacy say when I find intimacy I find rest every intimacy for those people who are married, intimacy in marriage always happens behind closed doors. And I want to share something practical that has helped me in my spiritual life. Prophet told one woman who had a problem and he said this to her. He says, you have a little bit of oil in your house. Go into your house, gather empty vessels and then shut the door behind you. And then the oil started to flow. Jesus said exactly the same thing in Matthew. He says, if you go into your secret place, talk to your father who is secret, but he says, before that, make sure you shut the door behind you. 
one of the reasons why many people do not find intimacy with the Holy Spirit is the intimacy is not found by striving it's only found by surrender and intimacy with the Holy Spirit cannot be found if the doors are not closed and there is a door that each one of us have in our life this door is called the door of distraction it finds its fullest manifestation through iPhone Android Facebook Snapchat Instagram YouTube Twitter what's up Viber and every other thing and the problem that happens is this we go into our secret place with God with our phone on and as you are reading the Bible you're seeing somebody liked your picture on Instagram so you need to click which picture do they like because you remember that some pictures don't get a lot of likes because the algorithm changed on Facebook and Instagram and it's affecting our identity and our self-esteem next thing that happens something else pops up somebody else just sends you a text message from work hey can you bring me some coffee and next thing that happens is that our focus is broken in order to have intimacy in marriage you have to keep the doors doors locked and in order to have intimacy with God you have to learn to come to your prayer time without your phone you may say but that's what I read my Bible that means put it on the airplane mode because you can't have intimacy if the door is open for some people that door is something else but in order to have intimacy with the Holy Spirit you have to pay a price of putting away the distraction outside of your time with the Lord so that God is the only one who can communicate to you not just someone else people can wait and it's important to make time with God the first thing in the morning there's nothing wrong with praying in the night for those of you who are night owls and you wake up at 11 at night like you, you, you emotionally wake up but something happens when you rise before the sun something happens before everybody else rises that you spend time with the Holy Spirit amen and I'm going to share something else about intimacy with the Holy Spirit is that in order to have closeness to the Holy Spirit you have to learn to be silent more than you shout and wait more than you wage war the challenge that happens on the conference setting like this one or in the service as right now there's a lot of shouting there is a lot of yelling there is a lot of screaming and that is good because that's a corporate environment when you are in your private place God speaks and God fills us through solitude and silence not through shouting the problem with many of us is this is that the shouts are many times are empty there is no substance inside and therefore these shouts they never do any good except they strain our voice when Israel was conquering Jericho God told them I want you to walk for seven days in silence and then on the seventh time on the seventh day I want you to lift a shout and when they lifted a shout the walls fell you know why because the shout was preceded with seven days of silence the reason why many people are empty on the inside and their words have no power is because the words are not backed up with moments will you come before God will you rest your soul like David says I wean my soul before God you calm your soul and you let your thoughts you let your emotions rage and connect to God and you let the voice from the inside your spirit connect with God not just tongues not just words but things on the side and then you feel your cup your spiritual soul begins to melt you begin to be repaired inside David says my soul is restored on inside and you walk out and it takes one shout and the walls begin to crumble why do walls crumble because your shout is not based on shout it's based on the silence where God fills you up the reason why a lot of times a lot of rebuking and commanding doesn't move mountains is because the commanding has not been preceded with the communion of the Holy Spirit with us I love when people fall when we pray for them but in my ministry personal ministry the Lord has told me, felt it. I felt like He told me. He said, Vlad, people are not going to fall when you pray for them. But I will bring down the walls in their life when you pray for them. That means that when they walk out, something will be different. And I said, Lord, I'll rather take that. But also, of course, it would be nice if people will fall. 
there's other ministers that the, the grace of God is too much in their life for that and that's good but what my goal is and I want it to be for you is that in order for your words to have power they have to be preceded by moments with God where only God's word is heard and yours is silenced people sometimes come to God and say well you know God needs to honestly there's nothing you have to say that God hasn't heard whatever you're going to say to God is not going to change God and pretty much is not going to change you but what God is going to speak back to you is what really going to change and place of intimacy with God is a place of solitude for me honestly it takes death to learn that because I am Pentecostal in my blood the only way we experience God as Pentecostals is when we you know bada Mazda shara bada Honda 300 miles per hour we speak it fast, we speak it loud and, and we strain our voice but sometimes you leave and you're like man I shouted, I screamed, I, I overpowered. I mean it was a lot of hype but I'm empty. But I'm dry. But my soul is broken. But I am exhausted. I am worn out. I am burned out. For your soul to be repaired you don't need shouting. You need silence in the presence of God. When we get together, we have to shout. But when we get alone with God, solitude and silence is where the repair and intimacy happens. When we wait on the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 So the first one is intimacy. The first part is when we wait on the Holy Spirit. He begins to repair us. 